As you know, one degree of angle measure is one three hundred and sixtieth of a full rotation. Now one minute of angle measure, which is abbreviated this way, is one sixtieth of a degree. And then one second, which is abbreviated this way of angle measure, is one sixtieth of a minute. So there's sixty minutes, uh, there's sixty seconds in one minute and sixty minutes in one degree for angle measure. So one full rotation once around uh, for a ray to get one full rotation is three hundred and sixty degrees. Uh, one of those degrees divided up into 60 equal parts, take one of those parts, that's one minute. Divide that one minute up into 60 equal parts, take one of those, that's one second. Or 360 degrees is one full rotation, 60 minutes is equal to one degree, and 60 seconds is equal to one minute. I want to go to the board now and work a couple of problems that involve degrees and minutes and also decimal degrees. For problem number one, we want to add 51 degrees, 55 minutes, and 37 degrees, 45 minutes. I'll line them up vertically as if I was doing a regular addition problem. Now, I'll add the minutes. 5 and 5 is 10. Carry the 1, 5, 6, and 4 is 10, so I get 100 minutes. 7 and 1 is 8, and 5 and 3 is 8, so I have 88 degrees. Now, this is the same as 88 degrees plus 100 minutes is the same as 1 degree 40 minutes because 60 minutes gives you one degree. So 100 minutes is 60 minutes plus 40 minutes, or one degree plus 40 minutes. So that will be 88 plus 1 is 89 degrees 40 minutes. Now a lot of calculators will have buttons on them that allow you to enter numbers in degrees and minutes, or even degrees, minutes, and seconds, and then do addition and subtraction with them, and it will take care of the carrying that for you. But if you want to know how to do it by hand, this is what it looks like. Here's a subtraction problem. Let's subtract 76 degrees 24 minutes minus 22 degrees 34 minutes. Let's line this up vertically also. Now, I want to subtract 34 minutes from 24 minutes. I can't do that without using negative numbers. Let me borrow one over here, so this will be 75 degrees and another 60 minutes. 75 degrees, 60 minutes is the same as 76 degrees. But now I have 84 minutes, subtract 34 minutes, so I get 0. 4 subtract 4 is 0. 3 from 8 is going to be 5, so 50 minutes. Now 2 from 5 is going to be 3, and then 2 from 7 is 5. So 53 degrees, 50 minutes, and what I had to do is borrow 1 degree in the form of 60 minutes. So when this number right here is larger than this number, I borrow. And in this case, I borrow in units of 60. So I borrowed 60 minutes right here. Instead of 76 degrees, then I wrote this as 75 degrees plus 1 degree, which is 60 minutes. Then I was able to subtract. Next, what I want to do is convert a number written in decimal degrees to degrees and minutes. Let's convert 35.4 degrees to degrees and minutes. So a number written in this form, 35.4, that's called decimal degrees. So 35. 0.4 degrees is the same as 35 degrees plus 0.4 degrees. So I'll take this decimal part, this 0.4 degrees, and change that to 60 minutes. So 0.4 times 60. This ends up 35 degrees. 0.4 times 60 is going to be 24. So 35 degrees, 24 minutes is the same as 35.4 degrees. So I simply take this decimal part of the degrees, which is 0.4 degrees, and, and change one degree into 60 minutes, so it's 0.4 times 60 minutes. That gives me 24 minutes. Let's go in the other direction and take a number that's written in degrees and minutes and change it into decimal degrees. So I have 45 degrees, 12 minutes, and I want to change that into 45 point something degrees. I want to change it into decimal degrees. So this is 45 degrees plus 12 minutes, and that's the same as 45 degrees plus 12 sixtieth of a degree. That's 45 degrees plus, when I change this to a decimal right here, 12 divided by 60, then I end up with 0.2 degrees. So that will be 45.2 degrees when I change to um, when I change this degrees and minutes into decimal degrees. 
what I want to do next is look at uh, how we use a calculator to find sine, cosine, and tangent of some angles written in decimal degrees and also some angles written in degrees and minutes. Well, I want to find sine of 27.2 degrees first. So sine of 27.2 degrees. Now some calculators, you'll punch in 27.2 when your calculator's in degree mode and then press the button marked sine. In other cases, you'll press the button called sine first and then put in your 27.2 degrees and then sometimes you press execute or equal or something like that. So it depends on the calculator you have, but you can check either one of the, cal whatever kind of calculator you have, when you do that, it will come out to four decimal places, 0 0.4571. So what you want to do is check to see that you, you can use your calculator to find the sine of 27.2 degrees. Now, this is really a decimal approximation to what is probably an irrational number. Um, we don't know because we, this isn't like the nice angles that we had in the previous uh, section 30, 45, 60, where we could find little triangles that went with them. Uh, it actually takes a, a little knowledge of infinite series to actually find how these calculations are made, but your calculator is programmed to do those calculations and give you a nice decimal approximation to the sine of 27.2 degrees. All you want to know right now is how to use your calculator to find these things. Let's try another one. What if I want secant 48.2 degrees? You'll notice that your calculator does not have a secant button on it. So what you have to use is one of your identities. Secant of 48.2 will be 1 over cosine of 48.2. So what you will do is, depending on your calculator, let's suppose it's one of those graphing calculators, you'll enter uh, cosine, then you'll take 48.2, enter that, then you'll use your little execute button or enter button. Let's just say it's the enter button. And then you have to use the button that's 1 over x. Sometimes it's written x to the negative 1, whatever. So this identity tells you the order in which to do your operations. First, you want to find the cosine of 48.2 degrees. Then you want to take the reciprocal of that answer. So however your calculator works for you to do that, you need to learn how to do that on the calculator. Just so you can check, if you do that, this answer comes out to be 1.5003. To four, four places past the decimal point, that's what it comes out to be. So I rounded off to this place right here. So do this calculation, whatever it takes on your calculator, to be able to get this answer. Um, how about cosine of 24 degrees 30 minutes? Most calculators will work only in decimal degrees, so we'd have to change this to decimal degrees 30 minutes. That's 30 sixtieths of a minute of a degree, which is one half a degree, so 24.5 degrees. Find the cosine of 24.5, and that should come out to be 0 0.9100. How about I go five places? 90996. Just so you can check against your calculator. 24.5, so I take 30, divide by 60, add 24 to that. That's my decimal degrees. Then I find the cosine of that. That comes out to be this. Here's another one. Okay, first of all, I'm going to change 36 minutes into degrees. 36 minutes is 36 divided by 60 degrees and if I do that let's see that's um, let's see 36 divided by 60 0. 0.6 okay so this comes out 0. 0.6 so this is the cosecant of 36.6 degrees I'll change to decimal degrees now I don't have a button for cosecant so I need to know that this is 1 over the sine of 36.6 degrees so you see how these uh, basic identities that we've been looking at since chapter one become very important in trigonometry. We seem to use them over and over again in a lot of different situations. Okay, so on the calculator now, I'm going to find the sine of 36.6 degrees and then take the reciprocal of that. So that ends up giving me, let's see, I've done it over here, and that will be 1.6772 to the nearest uh, four places past the decimal point here, 1.6772. So this is just four problems that if you can do these four problems on your calculator, then you know how to use your calculator to find the trigonometric functions of any angle written in uh, degrees and minutes or in decimal degrees. What I want to do next is work some problems in which we're given the sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle and then asked to find the angle. We use our calculators for that too. Here's our first one. First of all, let's find cosine, well, if cosine theta is equal to 0 0.9770, let's find theta. 
Now on the calculator, this is that, we have to use that button. It's going to be cosine with a little negative one up there. It stands for inverse cosine. Sometimes you have to press, you know, a second uh, button first and then the inverse cosine button. Sometimes you put in this first and then you press this button. Other times you press this button and then put this in. You have to decide how your calculator does that. Whatever it is, this implies that theta is to the nearest tenth of a degree 12.3 degrees. So if cosine of theta is 0 0.9770, and again, we're looking for theta between 0 and 90 degrees, just an acute angle theta for which cosine theta is 0 0.9770. You do that on the calculator, your calculator will give you back theta of 12.3 degrees in decimal degrees. Here's another problem. Cosecant theta is 1.8214. Again, we don't have an inverse cosecant button or a cosecant button. We have to do this in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant is 1 over sine, and that comes out to be 1.8214. So if 1 over sine is 1.8214, that means that the sine of theta is equal to 1 over 1.8214. So to do this problem on the calculator then, we have to enter 1.8214, find its reciprocal, and then find the inverse sine of that. I'm not sure how that's gonna work on your calculator in particular, but this is the order that we would do, that the process would take place. First we would enter 1.8214, then we have to take the reciprocal of that, however your calculator will do that, and then for the number that we end up with, we wanna take the inverse sine of that. So sometimes, what you, in some calculators, you might have to do inverse sine of the reciprocal of 1.8214. But the order in which you're going to perform these operations is enter this number, find its reciprocal, take the inverse sine of that. You'll have to wait a little while till we, we can be more specific about this notation right here. All we want to be able to do for this section is to be able to find an acute angle that solves one of these equations like this. If cosine theta is this, we want to know that theta is 12.3 degrees or be able to use the calculator to do that. There's a variety of calculators around, so you have to check the manual that came with your calculator and make sure that you can work the same problems that we have done and get the same results that we have. For this problem that we just worked, the answer is theta equal 33.3 degrees. Let me just check that real quick to make sure that's right. Yeah, 33.3 degrees. So again, you need to be able to get the same results that we got here using your calculator.